Hi and uh, welcome to another edition of uh, Unscripted on the Sofa with uh, Flavio and Mark. Hello, so hi, welcome. yeah. Um, today we're going to do another book review. This time we're going to uh, look at uh, a great street and documentary photographer, a guy called Peter Turnley. And uh, we're going to be looking at this book that I've had quite a lot. It's uh, a beautifully printed and presented book. Comes in a nice red slip case uh, called French Kiss. And it's all about sort of people embracing in Paris or around France, really. But um, I've also got this other book. Uh, I've got most of Peter's books, actually. But uh, I love also this book on uh, Cuba, which we'll look at in a few weeks. And uh, we've been looking at it quite a bit recently because uh, we're off to Cuba very soon, aren't we? In November. Yeah. Yes. We've got a street photography course out there and, uh, or, and uh, it's fully booked. And, uh, yeah, we're... Um, Super excited and getting lots of uh, inspiration. Looking, from, looking forward from, to go there. This book, yeah. yeah. But let's get back to that. Uh, the book we're going to talk about today, uh, French Kiss, uh, by Peter Turnley, and uh, we're just going to look sort of I don't know a dozen or so images in there and just talk about them and just give our views on it and uh, you know let's just uh, go through it. But uh, the opening image uh, of the book um, that I've actually got signed by Peter as well. So thank you, Peter. Um, is a very common street scene, but I think where Peter's got a great image here is here. He's uh, he's got a nice layered image, but also there's a lot of separation. So all the heads are separated; they're not growing out of each other. And and secondly, you can identify everyone. And quite often, you know, when you're looking at street photography, one of the biggest things we see from our sort of Facebook page is a lot of people taking pictures of people's backs. Back of heads, back of people yeah. themselves, and you can't recognize anybody. Absolutely. And as soon as I see a picture with loads of backs in it, it just said to me the photographer is scared to go and confront the real image. They're doing it from the back and they're trying to do it sort of a little bit sneaky. Yeah. But go around the front because there's a lot better image to be taken. To be fair, that is the one of the most challenging things of uh, street photography is actually sure. to take pictures of people and uh, with the possibility of being seen, which is no big deal, uh, sure. being seen because we are not doing anything mm. odd or uh, strange. We're just taking mm. pictures of them, and as long as we respect them, sure. there's nothing wrong with it. And there's nothing wrong with engaging with people if you're you're doing that, and then just stepping back and just saying, just carry on, mm -hmm. because you will get better pictures by confronting it and going around the front. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, the first image in the book is one you chose, Flavio. Um, yes. Uh, this is again. Uh, this is a uh, street scene th which is very, very common. Uh, we see it a lot on uh, uh, on the Facebook page, or we see it a lot on the Facebook. Uh, sorry, on the street photography community. Uh, but again, um, the value of this picture, apart from the fact that it sits into the book because the two people there are embracing and uh, kissing, is the fact that uh, apart from having a couple of different little stories, if you want. Mm inside the picture, which is the couple plus the little family of, uh, is that mum? I think so, uh, with the two kids uh, walking there. Then you also have a couple of other people uh, walking by, but he's being careful to try to keep them nicely isolated, not to overlap onto each other. And you can really well uh, distinguish well uh, each, uh, let's say, character mm -hmm. in, in the shot. So that makes it uh, a lot more interesting because mm -hmm. that is, again, the usual thing of having uh, sticks, uh, trees or poles growing out of heads and uh, things like this is uh, made it a little uh, less obvious here. Even if there is the guy with uh, less hair that has something growing out of his head because his head is so light in color and the background is much darker that doesn't sure. really uh, create any problems. No, I don't think it causes uh, any issues at all. Uh, I mean, it's a beautifully framed picture. And uh, yeah, it's sympathetic to the people in the middle that, that are the subject. But you've got this, these other things going around it. And uh, it's a street photograph that you know, is relatively easy to take if you, if you open your eyes and you're aware of what's going on around you, which yes. you should be as a street photographer. Yeah. But uh, let's go on to the next one. The next one. Let me see which one is the first one that we find. Uh, <laughs> There you go. This is the next one that you chose. Oh, yes. Um, I, I think this is in... Um, 
Possibly it's in his favourite place. I, th I think it might be because uh, I, I recognise the coffee machine. The coffee. And uh, it's a Brasserie uh, de Lille Saint-Louis, mm. if I'm saying I mean, it right. We assume it's his favourite place, and we just assume that because there's lots of shots in this book in that cafe. And yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's actually something we should all take on board because you, know, you get good shots by being close to people. Mm. And Peter's obviously very close to maybe the owners of this cafe or you know the, the people there there may be regulars in there etc that there might be people that are just going in there you know tourists or whatever but uh, peter's comfortable in there and he's going to get those great shots um, and people are comfortable with him being there absolutely shooting. yeah uh, but i love this little image um you know the guitarist um you know and two people singing there it's a nice little triangle one of them the waiter well. Uh, absolutely i didn't really sort of recognize that to start with but you're absolutely right it's yeah. the the singer the waiter and it it looks you know just you know she's a, got a real character this lovely old lady in in the in the in the frame but i love the shape of the picture you know there's that sort of nice triangle yeah. and there's this vertical line sort of being made by the sort of um the arm of the guitar um and you know it's just a lovely moment that you can imagine going into a bar where there's a sing song happening yeah. and you try and capture that. Yeah. Uh, it is it is a lovely picture and it's a whole little story in that. Sure. And uh, it's beautiful because you don't need to be uh, told why he took the image. You no. don't need to be told what's happening in there. You can really understand most of what's happening and then just build your own little mm -hmm. story around it as well. It's just a beautiful picture. And I know there's is. another image we're going to talk about in a moment where there's a story happening in the image but we don't really know what the story is. But the beautiful thing about photography is that you can make your own story up about this. I and mean, we could just say, you know, she's a regular client. You know, it's her birthday and they're, they're singing happy birthday to her. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Or it could just be that this uh, guitar player is a regular client that every once in a while, uh, in a while comes in and, and plays and they sing along together. We, we don't know, but no. it's just a beautiful moment. And everyone can make up their own little story. Absolutely. So, next image. This one is an image I chose, and mm. I chose it because I, apart from being endearing and likable at first sight, it's just a beautiful little picture. It's beautiful. Uh, this is a really, really good moment. This is a decisive moment again. Mm. Uh, and the quirkiness of what's happening in there lends itself so well to the street photography um, and mentality. You have a man sitting in a wheelbarrow. That's not common sight, a common sight at all. The man is a character in himself and his wife, I assume, is just giving him a kiss and a chick and the pose and everything else is so nice. Then you also have the black cat on the side. Um, one thing that is noticeable that why the cat has the head it perfectly framed by that little piece of block of stone which gives you a very, very good look at it. And the uh, heads of the two characters are framed by the, back, uh, the uh, dark background back there. So it's a really masterfully shot image mm. and a great, great moment. Mm. Totally agree with you. I think the key thing is is is, is composition because mm. if he'd been a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, this wouldn't have worked. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's absolutely spot on with the framing, uh, as you'd expect you know, a good photographer to be. And uh, that elevates the picture to a different level. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Moving forward, yeah. Yeah, um, again, there's a couple of images here next to each other that uh, we kind of picked. And the first one, again, it's, it's a, a very simple image, but it means and it shows that the photographer is close to someone. And it's that saying, you know, Kappa, Robert Kappa saying, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean close in proximity, although that does help, but it means that they're comfortable with you in their surroundings. Yes. And that's what the close means in a lot of cases. And you can just see this beautiful moment uh, between two people. And, you know, who knows? You know, she looks like she's she's working there. He looks like he knows her or is, is engaging with her. There's an there's a ashtray there. They're very comfortable with each other. You can just tell by his hand position. Mm -hmm. if it, you know, if you'd ask someone to pose, his hands wouldn't be like that. No. But uh, just a beautiful, simple image framed in the middle you know, and captured of two people engaging with each and other. And the, the moment, the timing is absolutely perfect because sure. they're just looking at each other in their mm. eyes and you can see that there is kind of a chemistry in that, a real chemistry. 
And again, yeah. it's um, it's really important that you get that sort of connectivity between people because I don't know if you ever go into a cafe and you just people watch instead of trying to take photographs, and you'd be amazed. It's like even the two of us on the sofa now. You know, we there's not that gaze between. Um, so if you look at someone constantly, it almost becomes a little bit unnerving. But it, mm-hmm. when you're talking with someone, you you're kind of you you're obviously with them and you're in that moment. Um, but if you're taking a video, it's fine because it's accepted that we move around. But if we took a picture, a still picture of me now talking with Flavio, you know, I'm looking over there, Flavio's looking over there. It almost looks like in a still image, you're disengaged, you're not yeah. interested in each other. So you need that moment where there's sort of the eyes are connected or there's there's a moment between the two of them. And that's the difficult part or the deci- that's what you need to catch, that decisive moment. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah. And I think that's the as moment uh, is caught also in the next image. And we wanted to talk about these images together mm. for a good reason. The second image, I think, again, is taken at the Brasserie de Lis Saint Louis. Uh, I think I recognize the drawing on the, uh, on the glass in there. And there was a, a good reason for wanting to talk about this image here, because apart from the good moment, the kiss uh, that is taken exactly at the right time, the, the waiter there that is waiting for the next client, and it just lends that uh, layer, the extra sure. layer to the image. But why, why did you want to talk about this picture in a specific to, next to the other one? I think it, it's well, the way the book is laid out is, is part of why I wanted to talk about this image, because you've got this very close, intimate picture, and then you've got this picture that's... that's a wide angle and they may be at the same restaurant they may not be we don't know really um, but this is a wide angle shot it's storytelling of a different nature it's scene setting and I think it's really important when you're laying out a book and you're sequence a book sequence in a book to have both these types of images mm-hmm. in a book otherwise if every image was just a, of close-ups of two people engaging with each other it would become very boring straight away so you need these other images to break things up Mm-hmm. and to keep viewer interest yeah and and that's why they're laid next to each other as well they sure. complement each other yeah. in a very good absolutely. way absolutely next image we chose let's see if i can find it there you go yes i i want to talk, uh, talk about this image for a very very si- uh, similar reason mm-hmm. uh, how to uh, choose the flow of the book uh, again if you if you have a book that only has the five stars images, they all um, are great images, one after the other, it becomes almost overwhelming. Like sure. having a whole movie with action that is at the top of the um, the tension in action all the time, it becomes boring after a while, sure. you just get annoyed. You need a flow in the, mm. in the storytelling, you need those lulls in the uh, in the story as you need the the highs mm-hmm. and i think this is one of those images that actually creates a quieter yeah. uh, moment and it's laid in in the book to just give you that kind of up and down flow mm-hmm. uh, in this case it still is a very very um uh, good image for the actual book and story because it's two swans and uh, we we identify swans with love and they're the couple uh, i believe swans have a lifetime relationship as Absolutely a couple they do. yeah they have a lifetime together so exactly and uh, it's a um, an image that just gives you a little bit of a uh, break from everything else that is happening sure uh, and the, the framing and everything else is pretty good because, mm-hmm. of course, we have the, the thirds there, the, um, the normal framing, but we were discussing the fact that uh, the swans, this time, instead of being taken as usual with the hard shape of sure. their necks, uh, this time they are looking away from each other, still with the normal shape of the necks, but for, uh, there is something different here sure. that is going on. I think, I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's a very calming image. Mm. Um, I think... It's a photographer with an eye that would see this because a lot of photographers would just walk past yeah. and not take this image at all. Um, I think it's beautifully framed. I think it's a great image to have in the book. You know, it, it certainly has its place in the book. And you're right, swans do mate for life. And it almost looks like these couple of swans have had a little tiff. Yes. And they're kind of looking at each other, looking away. There's that kind of little scowl on their face. Yeah. So there's that sort of opposite of the French kiss. Everyone else is intimate and close to each other. And these two are close, but they've actually looking at each other, looking away from each it's other. It's one of those moments. It's a very clever picture. Yeah. And one thing I'm noticing is the fact that you can still tell it's in Paris. 
because it's true that the background is blurred, but the blur is not uh, so much that you can't still identify that this is the back of Notre Dame de Paris. Yeah. So you can still tell it, it's in Paris if you pay attention. Which is part of storytelling. Absolutely, yes. And this is the picture that we were talking about before, yeah. a little story. I mean, I, I absolutely love this picture. Um, it's a picture I'd love to take myself or be very proud if I had taken it. Um, because there's so many potential stories around this image. It's definitely a storytelling image. You know, you've got this girl um, and it's almost, it's a reflection, is I think, um, of her in, in the, in, it's, it's the same um, cafe I again, I think, isn't it? Possibly, I don't, I'm not yeah. sure about that. But uh, then what, you, what makes it, I think, is you've got this guy walking in, in the space to the right. And if that space was empty, this mm. wouldn't be a great picture. No. It would be dead. It would be it'd just be a girl, a reflection of a girl. So you know, this is this thing about finding somewhere a great background or a great scene and staying there till something happens. And I know Cartier Bresson was you know, a big advocate of this. You know, he'd find a great place, you know, i.e. studio, um, and then wait for the right person on the street to come in that location yeah. and uh, take the picture. And that's what's happened here. The other reason I love it, I mean, first, you yeah, know, the storytelling element and, you know, who knows? Again, it's like that picture we were talking about earlier. Who knows? They may never, they may not know each other. No. They may be, have just met for a coffee and he's leaving, going back to work. Mm -hmm. But you can make your own story up about it and that's what's great about photography. It lets you interpret it how you want to. Um, but I think the real key about this is the positioning of the guy's feet. <clears throat> They're both off the ground. And if his feet were both flat-footed or his, his legs were close together, it wouldn't look, look, look like he was having a stride. But here, it, the position is absolutely spot on. And it's one of those little things, it elevates the picture. Yeah, a lot not, of people, not many people would notice They it. wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. Yeah. Um, but probably something would feel slightly amiss if that was flat-footed or it wasn't. Yeah. And m most people wouldn't identify it, but no. that just is one little detail that really makes. I, you're absolutely right, but I think if you put, if you took say three pictures of this frame as it happened, and one was flat-footed and one was with the feet both off the ground, mm -hmm. you'd look at the, this one and you say, "I love this one more." You may not know why. Yeah, a lot of photographers wouldn't know why, mm -hmm. but they'd be drawn to it just because it's absolutely yeah, yeah. Uh, the absolutely uh, absolutely perfect time. And then the other thing about making the story and something that lets you wonder and make your own little story is a sign of a successful picture when it engages you. Sure. Uh, you actually stop and try to think of a story, try to interpret what's going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a sign of a success in your picture because sure. you engage the viewer. Absolutely. And it's very important. Now the next one up, I think is, yes, this one here. I think this one is again taken at the Brasserie de Lille Saint Louis. Uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, yes, eh? mm. there is the glass there, there is the coffee machine. Of course, we can check in the back. We, we haven't done that, but you know, we can. So this one is a great moment. Again, uh, there is a, an intimacy about these people mm. that is incredible. Um, I, uh, we were talking about it. I, I really like how their hands are interlaced, uh, how uh, you can see that they are completely at ease with each other yep. and uh, she's kissing him and we were noticing how that hand on his and neck and face is so relaxed from her side sure. and uh, it, it, it's a sign of how much she cares about mm -hmm. him and mm -hmm. uh, you didn't mention you couldn't pose that yeah. no and I, I think um, you know, when we were talking just before when we were looking at the book one of the reasons it grabbed me was the way they're holding hands and you know everyone who's with a partner you hold that person's hand in a unique way. Yeah. And if you said to someone, hold her hand or hold his hand, they would hold it for the camera. Whereas they're not holding it for the camera, they're holding it how they feel comfortable with and do it with yeah. each other. And it probably wouldn't feel so natural if it was just it a It absolutely image, wouldn't yeah. be natural at all. Mm -hmm. And I think whoever you're with, those things just happen naturally. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention about this picture is about um, we don't know if it's a choice or if it is 
simply because he needed to grab the picture as fast as possible. The, uh, the image is not completely straight, but that doesn't detract at all from the image. Uh, the great thing is about the, the line of the bar, the counter coming through from the right uh, lower corner, and it creates a little bit of a leading line that sure. leads you towards the couple. And the fact that this big um, coffee machine is a pretty important element in the picture, sure. but it doesn't detract from the main couple. You mm -hmm. never think that is the subject. You mm -hmm. know exactly what the subject is, mm -hmm. but it creates a very good counterbalancing weight, visual weight mm -hmm. to the image. Mm -hmm. Of uh, course, we're going to Paris again in, I think, two or three weeks' time? Uh, I think four weeks' time. Four weeks', four weeks time. time, yes. But uh, and we're definitely going to go to this cafe and... Uh, uh, check it out and and have a cup of coffee there and, and try and take some photographs there and see if that coffee machine works yeah um <laughs> maybe maybe bump into peter himself who knows and buy but, him a coffee. Um, yeah but uh, i i think the coffee machine is slightly wonky uh slightly off because when you look at the the lines on the left they almost look quite straight but if you look at the bar it's wonky here. yeah it it's almost comes up Mm -hmm. at an angle but yet the, we'll have to check that we'll have to check it out yeah <laughs> but doesn't it detract it doesn't detract from it no, it's an amazing no. photograph it is um, absolutely yeah beautiful yeah this one um i picked out straight away and uh i picked it out because i recognized some similarities in this photograph to a shot called um or cafe. cafe by cartier bresson and uh, th there are, I mean, it is different. This is a, this is a lot wider, and Cartier Bresson's is a lot closer. And I think that's because Bresson mainly uses a fifty millimeter lens. Yes, whereas I think Peter's probably using something a bit wider here. Uh, but it's the cafe with a third element in that and makes a couple it interesting. Kissing. Yeah, a couple kissing, French kiss, and you've got the dumb waiter. Looks like he's waiting for them to. So, make a place in order yeah it really so makes the picture there's a bit of humor there yeah that's kind of elliot Erwitt type of humor um and i just i just love the whole sort of composition and what's happening the difference between this and the cartier breston shot is you've got this couple kissing around a little table outside a french cafe mm -hmm. but you've also got a little dog there instead of the dumb waiter, you've got a little dog there and the dog is looking up at the couple having yes, a kiss it is, yeah we'll put the both pictures next to each other so you know, I don't think Peter will mind having his work compared to Cartier Breslin because I know Peter knew Cartier Breslin. In fact, there's still a, a a link there that he uses his printer. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit more in a second. But just to make a point here, the fact that we are comparing Peter Turner to Cartier Bresson is actually praise. It's not a oh. criticism. So uh, the thing is that most uh, photographers need inspiration sure. need to have a, a visual library in their mind mm. to be able to then build shots that um, are their own shots mm. at the beginning like a musician like uh, any other art or craft you have to copy the masters sure. you have to learn what they were doing do your best to to copy it and then make it yours to create your own sure. things sure and this is his own picture it yep. reminds us of cartier bresson but it's his own picture and oh, it totally. has his own, stands on his own two absolutely. feet absolutely absolutely well so if it didn't uh, stand by itself it wouldn't be in the book i mean it stands absolutely. by itself head and shoulders um above the average yeah. absolutely absolutely. Yeah, absolutely so i think you can get out of, okay this uh this is a spread uh, which i wanted to uh, talk about because of uh, uh, how to edit your images and how to um, put them in the book um, in a certain succession uh, this spread here is um, a good example in my opinion because both images uh, i think they're not the strongest images in the book Sure. Uh, I think there's, the image on the right is stronger than the image on the left, but they both are uh, images that, um, in which the, probably the main subject is weather. So you have the snow in the left, you have the very, very heavy rain on the right. But uh, this is one of the reasons why those pictures are together, in my opinion. The second thing is how you choose to put one on the left and one on the right uh, is the fact that um, the uh, subjects in the picture on the left they are walking towards the right so they're walking towards the middle of the book and uh, the main subject in the picture on the right is skating towards the left and he's skating again towards the middle of the book so both um, uh, in both pictures the characters are uh, creating an implied 
line sure. um, that guides your eye back towards the other picture mm -hmm. and it keeps mm -hmm. your eyes inside the book and it keeps you studying the two picture, mm -hmm. pictures. And I think it's a very important point to make on, on how to uh, edit your book. Also, I, I mean, again, you can tell they're in Paris when you've mm. got the, the lamp posts that are almost identical in both images. Yes. Yeah. Um, that sort of tie in together as well. Beautiful. So we get to the last image we wanted to talk about. Yes. Um, this is a, a picture, I guess it's the, the, the same. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, two separate couples walking probably home at, in the early evening or late night after an, a night out. Again, we can make our own story up about it. But I love this. This is one of my favourite pictures that Peter has taken. And uh, so much so, you know, I was very fortunate a few years ago that uh, uh, my girlfriend stopped me, told me to sort of shut up and just uh, accept I love it and get it. And <laughs> she actually bought it for me for Christmas as a present. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter signed it and it's up in my office. So I look at it every day. And yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, Peter. I love it. But uh, talking about the picture again, um, the other reason I wanted to talk about it is um, the printing aspect because it's printed onto um, so silver gelatin. gelatin. Yeah. And yet I'm pretty sure this was taken on a Leica monochrome mm. uh, camera. I may be incorrect, but I'm pretty sure it was. And we just wanted to talk about that link with Cartier-Bresson because uh, Peter uses Cartier-Bresson's printer. printer which uh, the name is Voya Mitrovic, so, if I'm getting it right. Yeah, well, I think it's Voya, yeah. And um, Voya is obviously a master printer. I mean, to, first of all, to print Cartier-Bresson's work, you're going to be at the top of your game. Hmm. I don't think Cartier-Bresson printed at all. No, I think Cartier-Bresson wasn't uh, developing or printing his images at all. Sure. He was just sending them off to um, to the labs in Paris, and Voya sure. was the printer that was sure. printing his own work. And uh, my understanding is now that uh, you know, Peter uses a technique, and we'll put the link um, in to the, the article. Uh, yeah, to the article uh, below, so you can have a read of it. And it's a really, really interesting article. Those of the you, those of you who want to sort of get the best out of your your digital prints. And uh, my belief is that you know, Peter takes the images in black and white on a on a Leica monochrome. And then he uh, works the images or his uh, you know, printer or whatever, uh, his person works on the images digitally. Mm -hmm. um, and then they actually make a, a digital negative on acetate. Five by four, I believe. It mm -hmm. may be bigger or smaller. I don't, not 100%, but I'm pretty sure it's five by four. And then from that, they then make the silver gelatin print in mm -hmm. a traditional darkroom process. And the benefit of doing that is that you've got the silver gelatin print and you haven't got an inkjet print or a G-clay print, which is, is effectively the same. Um, but you're doing all the work in, in, on your computer digitally. So you're manipulating that still. So you're dodging and burning and getting the print absolutely perfect how you want to, so that when you, you then make that negative, so that when you print, probably very little dodging and burning has to be done to it. You've basically got it lends a, a very big consistency to the image that is printed which yeah. is important if you're printing for sale that yeah. you want to print many copies yeah and you want them to all to be to the same high standard have a look okay. at the article you know i may be wrong but it would be great to sort of hear your thoughts yeah yeah it, it's quite interesting because the choice of making the silver gelatin print is that it will have a different look to to oh, the does. normal inkjet it's just a um, a really, really different look, but you need to have an enlarger and to print straight away from the negative because oh, you, you can't do a silver gelatin from a digital no, pile. No, you can't. And you can see it. If you sort of, you take the print off the wall and you turn it in the light, you can c kind of see those specks of silver in the print. Mm. Um, it's absolutely amazing. But, uh, well, I think that's probably about it. So um, that was a great review of Peter's work. And uh, we look forward to seeing everyone real soon again. Please give us um, a big thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button down below. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you real, real soon. So uh, it's goodbye from Mark and... And Flavio. Goodbye. Goodbye.